Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagat Chatterjee from VGSO IIT Kharagpur who is taking this course. We are in week 9 and we are discussing about customer churn and customer lifetime value. So, till the last video we have discussed about how to calculate customer lifetime value. In this particular video, we will discuss about how in a, in a specific case this can be applied. So, as you know, so what is customer lifetime value? Customer lifetime value is the total amount of profit that a custom, uh, company can generate from a customer. So, it can be the total uh, over, the, over the lifetime of the customer. So, lifetime of the customer means not his whole uh, till his death, but till the customer is there with this company. Now, lifetime varies depending on what kind of uh, services it is. For example, as I told, uh, in case of education and etc., it can be let us say 6 years at max, 4 year to 6 years, 8 years is the lifespan of the student in an educational institute. Uh, if I uh, think about the same thing in, in terms of uh, let us say uh, how uh, the cars, you, you use the cars, let us say generally when you buy a car, you use it for 5 years at max, 5 years, 6 years. So, in that case, that 5 years, 6 year, whenever you are using this particular car, before you switch to another car or before you buy another car or before you uh, stop using this car, that particular time period is called the lifetime. And the amount of money that are value basically that can be generated, the amount, the, the amount of value that can be generated for the customer and in exchange amount of money that can be generated from the customer uh, within this lifetime is called customer lifetime value. So, we have discussed about how to calculate that, we have discussed about how in a B2B context we can calculate that, how in a B2C context we can calculate that, mainly used in case of uh, services, but also in case of products like let us say I have discussed how when you buy a Maruti car, how Maruti creates a network of services which can be given to this particular customer over his lifetime. That includes the services related to let us say repair services that can be related to the driving uh, license services that can be related to uh, the second hand car uh, selling services or that can be related to money which is which comes from the insurance company from the fuel company and spare parts blah blah blah. So, there can be so many avenues after you buy the car where you, the, the company can generate value and in an exchange can take uh, can, can generate profit for itself. Uh, over the lifetime of the customer. So, here we will be dealing with such kind of a problem. The, uh, the case study uh, that we will be discussing is something called Redwoods. So, it is a Redwoods case study. Redwoods is a hotel chain uh, which uh, works in uh, which is an international hotel and resort management company. So, what they do is they uh, uh, very very good to do uh, properties at various parts of the world and they acquired them. Now, these properties have their own history, they have their own culture, they have their own uh, I would say the designs and etcetera. Uh, and, and because they have their own history, own culture, own designs, uh, they are the customers who go to these properties will also look forward to have those kind of feeling. For example, if you go to let us say uh, a palace in, in uh, uh, there are lots of palaces which has converted which has been converted to a hotel. So, let us say if you go to a palace in uh, in uh, the Udaipur or in, in, in Jaipur and you that is a palace converted to a hotel, you might want to have experiences of Rajputs and their, their uh, the life habits, their historical uh, information you want to get. The, the, the your uh, room should look like that, your bed should look like that, your food should look like that. So, that kind of thing can happen. On the other hand, the same thing if you go to Mysore, the you might want a Mysore uh, related history, Mysore related uh, my, uh, related various kind of architecture and etcetera or southern architecture. You, you do not want the Rajputan architecture in the south. So, if you we have different palaces, the same thing when you go to come to Calcutta to a old school, let us say, uh, let us say Great Eastern kind of a hotel, which is a old old hotel 
uh, uh, that gives you a feeling of the colonial uh, India, the, the British uh, or, uh, or English architecture should be there, the food will be similar or, or it, will, it will give the colonial history of India, it will give an idea about the colonial history. So, each of these hotels, let us say uh, the, the Taj palaces in, in uh, Jaipur and then let us say uh, some hotel in Mysore or, 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 or similar areas and then one palace which is Gate Eastern in, in, in uh, Kolkata. All of these guys will have different history with it. It will not have the similar kind of history, you, will, you should not expect the similar kind of experiences there. So, Rosewood used to actually acquire this kind of properties at various parts of the world. It has 25 years privately held and there were a number of key executives in this particular company because it was diversified. So, it has small number of properties, 12 properties only they had and there, uh, there were 1513 rooms. So, not very large chain, small chain. And, uh, and I would say limited number of rooms. And it is majorly focusing the luxury segment facing increasing competition. So, there were lots of other hotels which were coming up which were not focused on this history part or heritage part and this and that. They were more focusing on the luxury segment. So, often times what happens is the customer who actually want to spend money on this kind of a heritage, uh, uh, heritage uh, buildings and heritage stays and etc are also luxury customers and if they are luxury customers they have a so, uh, they have a choice whether they will go to a five star hotel which is normal contemporary type design five star hotel or will, will they go for a heritage hotel so unless that uh, feelings of or attitude towards heritage history and etc is ignited unless that is ignited when it's a normal stage you are this, this Rosewood and let us say Hilton is probably targeting the same type of customers which is the luxury segment. And because the competition in this luxury segment was going up slowly, Rosewood had an issue that how I can manage this kind of a competition, how can I can, I can, I can uh, probably uh, uh, fight with this kind of a competition and make my niche segment very strong so that nobody can come into this. So, they have very heterogeneous properties as I was telling the properties where each of them has their own situations. Now, this is the major problem statement was like the there was competition that was going up that was the major problem. Now, hotels and resorts if I just break it into two groups, one are like corporate chains and another are individually branded hotels. So, corporate chains are actually, so, so let us say it is like, uh, if, I, if I am not uh, wrong, let us say it is uh, any, 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 any particular single brand which has presence in multiple cities and all under the same name, that is a corporate chain kind of a thing. So, for example, Marriott, Marriott is a classic corporate chain. But they, they have presences in multiple cities all over the, all over the world and they, ha they have the similar kind of atmosphere, similar kind of services, some a little bit of localization is there, but mainly very global service, maybe global uh, I would say uh, experience you can expect whenever you go into the Marriott hotel. So, their average daily rate is low, low means in comparison to the luxury segment it is low and then the occupancy rates are high. On the other hand, individually branded hotels have very high daily rate and their occupancy rates are low. So, obviously, price goes up, the occupancy rates goes down, the demand goes down, that is one thing. Another major problem that individually branded uh, hotels used to face is there is no cross selling. See, in corporate chain, if you have a loyalty card, you can use the points of loyalty card uh, that has been acquired from a particular hotel of Marriott chain can be redeemed in another particular hotel also of Marriott chain. So, if there is a focus on cross selling, if you are a push in cross selling, the chances that a guy who will come in Marriott New York will also come to Marriott Kolkata if he by chance visits Kolkata. and and and. Uh, the chances of having a particular customer within the network becomes much higher. So, when the chance, the probability that a customer will be staying within my network will not switch to another network, 
the churn comes down and that is where the occupancy rate goes up. So, there are two reasons. One is obviously the reason of daily rate, but one may ask that daily rate can individual hotels can reduce the daily rate and that will increase their occupancy rate. That is true, but also you have to think that whether there are other external drivers of the demand or not. If you can increase your demand without compromising your daily rate, then that is something which is you have to which you should do. So, that is where, where this particular case comes in. So, for example, uh, here there are uh, I think 4 hotels are there, the bar charts are occupancy rates and the lines are average daily uh, rate. So, you can see that Rosewood is which is the red one, which is the leftmost one, we will have lowest occupancy rate uh, in 2001, 2 and slowly it is going up. And the yellow one is basically the four seasons, four season was quite high and then it dropped actually. And then uh, the next was risk cultron, risk cultron was always be the leader. So, four season was almost equal to risk cultron at some point of time in 2001 and 2002, but in 2003 it dropped. And uh, then comes Orient Express Hotel which was slowly deteriorating. So, it was high and then low and then further lower. So, this is the occupancy rate situation. So, slowly I would say that Rosewood was improving, but we have to further study that how much is the actual improvement and this is and how, how they can they can actually do further better. On the other hand, if I check the lines, you will see that the green line is for Ritz Caltron, which is the lowest and the, uh, this blue line is for Rosewood, which is the highest. So, obviously, the ADR is high. In the middle 2002, all of them did a, a little bit lower price other than this one which is Orient Express. Orient Express was increasing their price like anything and that is where probably their occupancy rate got affected. But overall, this is the situation of this business. So, that is how I can say that Rosewood was not doing very bad, but it had an opportunity to do further better. Now, the question is how? Another important uh, metric is uh, uh, rough parts, which is revenue per average uh, night or whatever I forgot, which is uh, basically, basically how many occupancy is something that they have to calculate. So, Rosewood rough part in dollars is almost close to 200. And then, so this is revenue that you can incur, revenue that you generate per occupancy is something that we are checking here. So, which is, which is very close to 200 and then, then this, this one has improved in 2002 and in 2003 it has further improved. So, that this is not exactly based other than your room rates, what are the uh, other uh, money that you can generate is actually told in rough part. Now, the branding strategy is was the major problem for Rosewood. The Rosewood, because it was an individually branded house, it was focusing on individual branding strategy. So, what is an individual branding strategy? So, you will see individual branding strategy looks like this. So, I will just open it. So, just one minute. Okay, so, the individual branding strategy looks like this, where well, let us say there are two options. They, I can say that, okay, let us say if I have a Taj Palace which is in there in Jaipur, I can say Taj Palace and then I can say Rajputana, something like that. I am just giving an example, Rajputana, which will, which will focus on this Rajputana as a brand. And Taj Palace is actually the umbrella brand, is a sub, but this is majorly the brand. Like what we do it for Nestle, Maggie. So, Nestle is something that you, you, it is there, you remember that Maggie is under Nestle, but you also remember that Maggie is the major brand. So, Taj Palace is Rajputana or you can say Taj Palace and then Rajputana. So, the idea is that 
The moment I am doing this, I am focusing on the factor that there is something called Taj Palace and I will expect a palace and, and I will expect a palace in Rajputana, that is what I will expect. So in a Udaipur, I will expect a palace. So if I by chance have the experience of Taj Palace in somewhere else and whatever experience I got there, let us say a beautiful room, a, 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 a king-like bed and king-like services and king-like food and blah, blah, blah. Similar thing I went expect in Rajputana. On the other hand, if I focus on Taj Palace Rajputana and like this where Rajputana is big and Taj Palace is low, so, I will actually expect Rajput oriented history. So, the expectation will not be services, expectation will not be anymore the similar kind of stuff that I have got in some other Taj Palace. It will be majorly focused on the history of Rajput. I will see spears and, and probably swords and these and that and some. Uh, some historical events which the, the pictures of historical events will be there, uh, 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 wars will be there, probably great kings of Rajputs will be there. So, these kind of things I would expect. So, the expectation changes and that is how the, now let us say I am a customer who is more interested in uh, the history of, of, of the uh, Raj, the, the western part of India, let us say. I focus and I, I like the grandeur and etc. of, of I, I lo love these uh, war stories and etc. So, then in those kind of cases, I would be preferring Rajputana. And now, if I go to let us say some other Taj Palace, so I am not sure whether there is, uh, I forgot there if there are other Taj Palaces. Let us say I am just writing, let us say I am saying that there is a Taj Palace and then. Uh, some other king, let us say, uh, let us say Maharashtra. Okay, or or, or, or Taj Palace Shivalika or something like that. So, question is that the things that I have expected here, will I get the similar thing here? The expectations will change. Because here I am focusing on Rajputana, Rajputana's history is being focused. Here some other history will be focused. A person who is fond of this history might not be fond of this history. So, if that is the case, then a customer who comes here cannot be to him cross selling of this thing cannot be done. On the other hand, if you focus on Taj Palace as a thing and Rajputana is a small sub part of the brand, a sub brand, then Another thing which is Taj Palace and then small Maharashtra, here you are focusing on Taj Palace, you are not focusing on Rajputana or Maharashtra or something else. So, if that is the case, then a person who has experiences of Taj Palace might be sold, he, he, you might try to uh, cross sell stuff here as well. So, that is where the the individual branding and the umbrella branding comes into this picture. So, coming back to whatever I was saying in the context of uh, uh, our, our case. So, there was an individual branding facility of unique properties and that is why the ads were property specific. The soft, there was soft branding of Rosewood name. So, Rosewood was small and then the property name was big and there was a sense of place. So, I, so, everything was around that uh, the heritage and etc as I told and that is why the service and product was very much flexible because it the local manager whoever was managing that property, he was given the all his all the independence to do whatever with this property because he knows about the heritage, the culture, the, the history much more than a brand manager at a group level sitting at some other city. So, then he was more focused and because it was flexible, it was costly and that is why the margin was low. Now, that is where there was a problem. So, they had a very small niche market, only 12 properties are there and average ADR was 750 dollars, uh, which is very high, average daily spend or if not daily uh, ADR. Average revenue per guest over 2 days was 1500 dollars, which is, was also very high, but the problem was the customers were not loyal because as I told the customer of Raj Taj Palace Rajputana will not go to Taj Palace Sivalika or Sivaji or something like that. 
might not be interested or there might be some customers who are more focused on Rajput history, not so focused on Maharashtra's history and then there can be a less amount of cross selling. Similar things were happening here. So, retention rate was only 17 percent, very low multi-property customers. So, uh, customers who were showing their face into multiple places, the uh, history loving customer let us say were very low 5 percent. Unaware of they were not knowing about this Rosewood brand, they were loyal to the individual brands, individual Rajputan brand or Shivaji brand and etcetera. And Rosewood brand awareness through the travel, uh, so majorly all the awareness was generated by the travel agents. So, that was the problem. So, in this kind of a case, there was a individual branding versus corporate branding issue. So, individual branding differentiate from luxury brands. Individual branding provides higher rates, higher money, but the problem is cross selling is low, positioning is also low, very narrow. On the other hand, when you do a corporate branding, a overall rosewood branding, then it encourages cross sell, it, uh, it operation economies of scale is high, marketing costs reduce, but you need consistency, you need similar kind of uh, service experiences everywhere which these guys who were there for quite a few years, let us say 25 years, was 25 year old company, they might not be interested all of a sudden to give certain Rajput uh, food in a, in a Maharashtra based uh, hotel or some Maharashtrian food in a Rajput based hotel. They might be not be interested in giving that kind of products and services because they might not be interested in giving a standardized thing, but that was needed. It needs consistency when you do a corporate branding dilemma with uniqueness and individuality. So, that is something that as I just told. Corporate branding may deter some customers and managers also because some customers might want that flavor, the local flavor. Some managers might be more interested to give the local flavor, these guys will deter and then there were significant inv investments involved. So, that was the business problem now that which one should I do? I have both pros and cons in both the side. In mathematically, which one should I do? So, there was some information that they cal ca collected and the assumptions and the informations were given here. So, number of unique guests were around 115000, this value was given. Average daily spend with branding, without branding both was 750, but with corporate branding it was growing at a 6 percent rate. And then average number of stays is 2 days, average gross margin is 32 percent in both the cases. Average number of visits per year per guest because cross branding will increase a little bit of number of visits, it is 1.2, it has gone up to 1.3. Average marketing expense is much higher in case of corporate branding. What is more interesting is that the total number of repeat guests is 5750 additional. So, this is something which is important to understand. So, there are 5750 number of additional customers. The number of multi property guests is 10 percent of this. So, previously it was 5 percent that goes up to 10 percent of this. So, that is where this additional 5750 comes up. And to do as I told there is a marketing cost involved in doing this. So, the additional marketing cost is almost 10 million dollar, uh, 1 million dollar and the discounting rate is 8 percent is what I have considered and retention rate also increased by 5 percent as I told. So, 21.67 percent. So, these are some of the basic figures that they calculated from their exhibits, various kinds of information, various charts, reports and etcetera. So, from there this CLV calculation is done. Just check, check what I have done. So, first I have done without corporate branding. So, without corporate branding in the 0, year number 0, the acquisition cost if you check here it is 150 dollars. See, 150 is the guest acquisition cost. So, that is what is the only cost. There is no marketing cost in the first year because you are not doing anything. So, that is the cost and what is the benefit you generate? 0. But in the second year, this guy stays for 2 nights and average number of time he comes is 1.2 and per night he spend is 750 rupees. So, then revenue per customer is nothing but the multiplication of 2 into so 750 rupees per night, 2 nights in an average you stay, so 1500 rupees and 1.2 times in an average you come to me. So, then another into 1.2 is coming up to be 1800 and that is increasing, this particular value is increasing at a rate of 6 percent. So, you see this formula is the C5 into 1.06 
this formula is d5 into 1.06. So, slowly it is increasing and that is why your revenue is also increasing. And if your revenue is increasing like this, what is the profit? Profit I told that the margin is how much? 32 percent margin in both the cases. So, this value into 0.32, this value into 0.32, this value is then 0.32. So, this is the money that you generate. And this is the first year acquisition, so no other acquisition cost. And first year marketing cost is 0. Second year's marketing cost is 130 and that is increasing at a rate of 3 percent. So, 130, then 130 into 1.03, that into 1.03, that into 1.03 and so on, it is increasing. So, that is why the profit is nothing but the gross profit minus the cost gives me the profit if the customer is retained and that is how I am getting here, which is nothing but this minus this minus this. So, 576 minus 130, 446, 0 minus 150 minus 150. 611 minus 134, that is why I am coming 476.66. So, these values are actually up to decimal point. So, you can check that and so on I am getting certain values. Now, what is the probability? The retention rate is 16.67 percent. So, the guy whoever I am spending the acquisition cost and here the assumption is whoever I am trying to acquire gets acquired. So, 1 second year is also coming that is why 1. After that the acquisition the retention comes in. So, up to here it is the probability that this guy will be here is 1. After that the retention is 0 0.1167 then this into 0 0.1167 then this into 0 0.1167. So, basically 0 0.1167, 0 0.1167 square, 0 0.1167 square cube and so on. So, if this is the probability and this is the probability of retention and this is the profit if retained, then what is the expected profit? This into this probability into x. So, that gives me the expected profit. If I consider the discount factor which is I have taken as 1.08. So, I have I got ok. So, discount factor has to be not into 1.08 ok ok sorry sorry. So, this is the discount factor means this is basically the denominator that by which I will divide basically. So, this is the discounting factor. So, the values I am getting is 446 divided by 1.8 which is 413.79 divided by 1.16 which is something like that and so on. So, this kind of discounting factor I got if I add them up I am getting 345. This is my net present value. I just copied and pasted the whole calculation here in case of the only thing that changes instead of 1.2 it was 1.3 fair enough. Then uh, instead of 150 along with that there was a marketing cost which is 1 million divided by 115000 these are the number of customers. So, that is the acquisition cost. Then this remains same it starts from 138.7 and this acquisition cost is still there fair enough. So, I got certain amount here and the rest of the calculation is still absolutely same. You see the probability of retention also increased 1, 1, 1, 6, 7, 1, 6, 6, 7, 2, 1, 2, 1, 6, 7 and the calculation gave me that the total NPV is coming up to be 401. So, the additional money that I am generating over 345 and this is 56 and increase in total profit is 56 into the number of customers which is this much. So, if you are saying that your cost of doing the branding is lower than this, then you should go for corporate branding. So, that is what we can get a generate. So, based on that it is a positive value, they have based on that they have gone for a corporate branding and after corporate branding this is the post branding comparison you will see that up to 2013 this was the situation for Rosewood. If I just plot only Rosewood's thing, I forget about the other one. So, I will just focus on Rosewood's performance. So, just check Rosewood's performance that and and, and what, what is the big number of rooms I will just delete, I do not need that. Okay, now, check that. So, from to the occupancy rate uh, which is the rate 
was more or less same if I just uh, delete these two you will understand that this is not exactly same, but slowly the revenue per night has also gone up and the area rate they could increase over the time. But even after increasing ADR, you see after 2003 when they did this corporate branding, after that it increased, the occupancy rate also increased from 50 percent or, or let us say this one is how much, 65 percent, it increased to 71 and then uh, the value is here also, here it is how much, 65. So, from 62 it increased to 65 and then 71 and then it got saturated there probably 71 and 70 percent. So, almost 7 8 percent increase in occupancy rate happened and repeat customers as I told went up by 5 percent and the revenue also uh, rev revenue also go went up from uh, around 218 to 300 dollars and then ADR also went up from 351 dollars per night average daily rate to 429 dollars which is very high. So, and then this is the number of rooms, number of rooms they actually reduced a little bit over time because some of the properties they cancelled and then then again they acquired some other property. So, that is the situation for road Rosewoods. You can compare the values with other hotels also and see that whether Rosewood in a competitive scale was doing good or bad. So, this is how you calculate customer lifetime value and take a strategic decision where whether you should go for. Uh, so, after story is in 2004, uh, Rosewood Hotel, Rosewood Resorts, Rosewood University and Rosewood Orientation was done and in 2005, Rosewood uh, become a big name, a non ambiguous name. Uh, in 2006, slow change for well established hotel brands were done by Slowwood Rosewood Lifestyle was showing results and then in 2007 they could actually say after 3 years of calculations they could say that the branding strategy the corporate level umbrella branding strategy was working. So, that is where I will stop this particular video with the case study and I will meet you with survival analysis in the next video. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.